to order the Parks and Recreation Commission meeting for Tuesday, October 10th. Should we do our roll call? Uh, yeah, Commissioner Baker. Here. Okay, Commissioner Bora. Here. Commissioner Hester. Here. Commissioner Keene. Here. Commissioner Rooney. Here. And Chairman Waverly, perfect. And we have nobody joining us this evening in the audience, so no public comment, but I would just like to take a minute and introduce, I'm sorry I walked in a few minutes late, um, our newest member. Yes, yeah, so uh, this is Todd Linder. His first day for the Parks and Rec Department was August 28th. Todd is replacing um, Hillary, who left the field to take a, a job pursuing other um, in Denver's. Uh, Todd comes from the uh, Bensonville Park District. Uh, he has a vast knowledge in aquatics, events, and programming. Hi. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah. Happy to be here. Nice to have you at your first uh, meeting. We haven't met in a couple months, so. Mm -hmm. um, all right, moving right along to approval of minutes. Do we have any questions or inputs for the April 25th minutes? No? All right. Can I have a motion to approve the April 25th minutes? So moved. Second? Second. Second. Okay. Um, and then roll call vote Commissioner Baker. Aye. Commissioner Bora? Aye. Commissioner Hester? Aye. Commissioner Keene? Yes. And Commissioner Rooney? Yes. Perfect. Moving on to the May 9th minutes. Any questions or inputs on those? Gosh, they were perfect this time. Uh -huh. um, may I have a motion to approve the May 9th minutes? So moved. A second? Second. Okay. Commissioner Baker? Aye. Commissioner Bora? Aye. Commissioner Hester? Aye. Commissioner Keene? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Rooney? Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Great. All right, moving right around to right along to item number five, the liaison reports. Um, we have a gateway update, Mike. Yeah, I attached the most recent gateway report. Not, not much has changed in it. Um, Hinsdale's still leading the way out of all of our neighbors with uh, participants with inclusion uh, services being rendered. Um, I do want to say that myself and Maggie actually did get a list from our SRA of all of our members, and we did do a quick audit, just seeing who they were um, within the community and just to verify everything looked kosher. and. Um, for the most part, it, do, it did. There was a couple individuals that um, uh, we're not sure if, if they still reside in the community or not, uh, but otherwise we're happy to see that that service is still being rendered and we'll have another report for you, hopefully next couple weeks. It is delayed that are meeting right now due to national conference, so they pushed it back. Looks like they had a great summer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, you know, and I, I'm not sure if you guys are aware of it, but Gateway did use our shelter out at Burns Field for their summer camp all summer, and they also heavily used the pool, too. So we helped them out as much as possible. Do they walk from there to the pool? Or do no, they, get they, have, they have transportation of buses. And what mostly do they do at Burns? Do you know, is that like a... You know, the, for the few times I've had a moment to run out there in the summertime, they were playing on field activities. So whether it was Frisbee or soccer or um, utilizing the park or tennis courts. Okay, great. Any questions on the gate report? Okay. Moving on to our staff report for summer staff report. So we've already introduced Todd. Todd's going to be a valuable part of these reports going in the future. He will uh, be given updates himself, but since he's only been here for a couple minutes, I, I'll, <laughs> I'll take care of this one. <laughs> um, uh, our fall winter brochure actually was posted on July 31st. Registrations began on August 7th. Um, our breakfast with Santa and lunch with Santa events were sold out pretty quickly with wait list. We were able to expand our offerings um, to take several off of the wait list, but I do believe we are completely full right now. Um, the winter spring brochure is being worked on as we speak. It will be posted on November 27th and registration will begin December 4th. Um, as a staff, I know we're looking at getting some of those yard sale signs to put around our parks, saying registration starting just to get the word out. Um, we also are going to be putting either a sticker or pulling out a newspaper ad in the Hinsdalian warning residents about registration. Uh, summer events, I, I know that these already passed. We haven't met in a while, so bear with me. Uh, we did all of our traditional summer events, including lunch on the lawn, movies in the park. 
uh, Santa at the pool. Uh, our, unfortunately, our unplugged in play events was canceled at Burlington Park here due to thunderstorms in the area. Hey, uh, hey Mike, Mike, just going back to the brochure, I, I sort of appreciated the reference to the Ninja program, especially since we received some comments in our <laughs> um, uh, playground discussion about more Ninja stuff. How, how do we do we do that? Like, do they set that up at the community house or they so go the, to a special the, facility for that? The Ninja program is actually, um, you know what, I'll let Todd take it. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's actually based out of Elmhurst. Um, they have their own, it's pretty much like a gymnastics gym. It's right off of 83 and York Road, um, right across from that new, um, what de dealer is that? The Kia dealer that's over there. So we just take registrations. They work with a couple other park districts to get their numbers up. I but yeah, then they offer a substantial discounted rate for our those kind of programs that they're offering because they're almost like a fitness gym where you have to pay like monthly and you can coast, come so many times a week. By working with us, they just offer a certain class time so it makes it a little bit more affordable. Okay, cool. Hey Mike, um, you're just uh, making the uh, brochure online or are you printing it and mailing it too? No, we haven't, pr we haven't printed and mailed the brochure for Okay. numerous seasons now it's all digital um, one of the reasons it is digital is because when we do have mistakes or have to make changes we can adjust it quickly um, I do know that I have one um, active adult that has contacted me asking if we could print the brochure and I said fine I'll just mail it to him but that was one that out of all of our residents that did that I, I do like the idea when you said about putting the sticker on the Hints Daily and, and putting the placards in because I know for instance, when it was time for this summer program in terms of like the pool registration and that early bird, I know have I know people who miss that who are like longtime pool users, Hinsdale residents, because there is no there was no uh, you know heads up like the brochure is out. So I think that it, the first year that we did go online, we we did send postcards to mm -hmm. everybody to let them know. Then we stopped doing the postcards. So. You know, I, I think the postcards, I know there's a cost to that. So I think that if you do an, do a sticker, do an ad, do the placards, but just to alert people, that is a good idea. Yeah, and we can also take our registration system. We do have a lot of emails, whether they're right or wrong, um, but we can do a constant contact blast out to our participants and et cetera, warning them. Yeah, yeah. and your social media pages. Now. We yes. actually do send out an email via constant contact when the brochure goes live and when registration opens to the people yeah. that are subscribed to the monthly newsletter list. And right. it goes out in the monthly newsletter. Yeah, I think it's more like the elderly residents. That's what it is. Yeah, that's exactly that's what really the thinking. people the that are elderly. missing yeah. it most. But so whatever we can do to help. Um, the 4th of July parade, I, I know uh, some of you were there and some helped. The 4th of July parade was a huge success. We had over 80 different entries. Uh, we really tried to uh, make it larger than normal due to the 150th anniversary of the village. Um, it was my first time I saw the parade. It was honestly a real joy and I look forward to being part of it for many years to come. Um, we do have some fall special events coming up. I want to bring to everyone's attention and it's the first one is actually this Saturday, October 14th at Burlington Park. It is our fall family fest. I know the weather's not looking great, but rain or shine, we're, we're going for it. Um, it was moved from Hinsdale Middle School to Burlington Park to uh, bring our resources together and to have a joint event with the police and fire department that's having their open house. So that way children can walk between the open house, our event, and then partake in the downtown trick-or-treating all in one area. Um, hopefully everyone do the rain dance. It's going to hold out the weather. Uh, but we'll have bounce houses there, uh, pumpkins when, when they last, crafts. We do have some kids entertainment. Uh, there are some food vendors coming out there, and it, it's a joint partnership between the Hinsdalian, the library, the community house, um, and us and Chamber of Commerce all working together to put on the event. You know, I was actually thinking about that, um, maybe a very stupid idea, but if it's pouring, like I understand the bounce houses wouldn't fit, but would you be able to use like the lower level of the garage? You know, we, we actually called the vendor today inquiring if the bounce houses could use in the rain and they said they, they didn't care <laughs> and, and they're meant for weather. Um, so we're, we're just gonna kind of play it by ear. I did reach out to the middle school today in the events I had to pull an audible, and unfortunately, the gym is booked for a gymnastics competition right now. Um, so, 
we're, we're kind of at Mother Nature's mercy right now. But, you know, they're just saying scattered showers, and that doesn't necessarily mean anything. It's Chicago. They don't know the yeah. weather that far out. <laughs> um, our up holiday events coming up, we already talked about breakfast with Santa, but we do have our Winter Wonderland event on December 3rd at KLM, which is always well attended. And we also have our letters with Santa that will begin for the season coming up. Um, I do want to say last year we had, oh God. It was over 500. Yeah, over 500 letters that we had a draft back. And other park districts have started advertising that they cap at 50. Oh my gosh. So we don't put a cap on how many Santa We have a direct will line to Santa. To. Santa will reply to everybody. <laughs> Uh, our our t-ball program and, and as you know most of our programs are contracted out with the exception of our adult softball and really kids t-ball we do in-house um, our t-ball program continues to do well we had 108 participants in it this fall um, in the summer we had 97 and the, these numbers do compare to all the years in the past a uh, little bit of growth uh, we did get salt creek ballet to provide a sponsorship for 800 dollars, which helped offset the cost of the shirts um, that, that's one thing that we've been really trying to push hard on is sponsorships and utilizing the, the community's help as much as possible to help with our program fees and expenses. S social media, just kind of a high level update here. We did provide a comparison for number of people who viewed our post and number of people who liked, shared, or commented on posts. Um, as you can see, if you look between KLM and then if you look between the parks and recreation, you will see that there has been a steady growth from spring to summer, um, which I think is a contribute to us trying to engage the community and being more actively visible in a social media platform. Uh, so we will continue our efforts on that and being as um, active as possible to get information out to people. Our park summer highlights, this is from the Public Service Department. Um, one thing I want to point out and give kudos to them is they maintain 25 athletic fields this summer, and that does not include ball fields. That is just soccer and lacrosse. There's a lot of soccer goals to move, uh, to fix, and to stripe every single week. Uh, they did complete several projects around our parks. One of them was cleaning up our sand pits and playgrounds and raking uh, of sand volleyball courts that were weed or um, edged. We also did replace uh, bleachers at Vec in Pierce Park, and we also installed a new uh, tennis screen at Burns Field, which they attached a picture below. Uh, and then actually behind that tennis screen, I don't know if you guys have been out there, there was some uh, landscaping done where they did some shrub pruning and removing of overburden between the houses and the tennis courts there. Summer volunteers, it, it was kind of a nice summer. We had two volunteers reach out to us. One uh, gentleman walked KLM several times throughout the week, picking up trash throughout the park. It's a 55 acre park and stuff blows from county line in there and people tend not to pick up sometimes. So this volunteer spent a lot of time out there just walking the park, picking up trash. And then one thing- Did he approach us? Like he, how did that happen? He, he did. He, his, his dad actually called me. He needed uh, um, hours for school. And we don't necessarily, we didn't have a, an event to provide the hours. So I talked to the public service department and we came up with this idea of putting him out at KLM, walking the park, helping with assist with garbage and stick pickup and et cetera. And then um, Ferris Siddiqui did approach us for an Eagle Scout program projects, which is we get about one of these a year. Um, he actually worked on Eleanor's Park, and if you've been out, have not been out there, I encourage you to go out there. There's a garden in the middle of the park that was very overgrown. Um, Ferris and our park, public service department actually pulled out all the weeds, and then he bought pollinator plants and turned it into a pollinator garden. And then um, our public service department focused on those garden beds, doing some tree work, tree removal, um, and, and some general um, maintenance. So the, that whole little corner area, it looks nice. And as John Finnell said, it's one of those parks that you see when you come into our community right away. So we kind of wanted to get that spruced up and looking nice. And would we ever uh, consider promoting opportunities to have that level of involvement to maybe offset some of the labor challenges for the summer, like to the Boy and Girl Scout communities, to any of the schools looking to get their service hours. 
that type of thing where we can organize it as such where you don't have a massive land rush on it but you know you could kind of segment that out like i said to offset some of that out and you know it's a win-win situation for everybody. yeah i definitely think we can expand on that it's it's very high level language in our in our brochure or on our website right now but yeah i definitely think we can expand on it and the two scout projects that i've been a part of here they've been a great success i mean they might take a while but sure. They, they've been a really nice success and they've turned two of our parks into something that really needed some work. Do you, do you find that you get enough, um, you know, ad hoc volunteers for various events and so forth from, you know, schools? And you know, so honestly, no. Um, a lot of our volunteers from our events are come from help with the community house. They have a volunteer program over there, so we'll, we'll call them and ask for help. That's part of the reason we partner with them. Um, but as far as school volunteers for our events, we, we don't get that many at all. So I would recommend, um, and Heather, you're probably still connected, but the two NHS sponsors at Central, um, those kids need to get, I think it's 30 hours in a calendar year. And they usually provide a list of organizations that the kids can go to. Um, and they usually have a meeting and talk them through it. And it would be nice yeah. to get us on that list so that then sure. at least it's, it's a, you'll immediately get some contacts there. I could give to their names. Yeah, no, that'd be yeah. great. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, all that more help we can get, you know, yeah. the better we're a small department. So I definitely appreciate. Yeah, and they're struggling help. at the end. I mean, because they get a special tassel if they are in NHS and if they don't have those hours at the end by graduation, they don't get the tassel. So like literally in, you know, March and April, everyone's stressing to get those hours in. Yeah. But there's also service one. hours at St. Isaac's too. Oh, so yeah. there's a con do you have a contact there? Yeah, I can get a contact over at St. Isaac's that you to could do pass their service them. hours. Yeah, yeah great. That'd be awesome. We appreciate it. Yeah. So Ian, you would welcome students reaching out to you? Yeah, I mean, for, we, we, uh, would, well, we would definitely welcome. I mean, there may or may not be opportunities. It really depends on what's going on in the year. And, and more importantly, we have to make sure that they're not using heavy equipment and machinery and stuff like that. So we do have a lot of rules we, we need to follow. Um, but I think we've shown this summer thinking outside the box. There's ideas and opportunities how we can utilize some of this help, and the KLM is a perfect example of that. For cleanups, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Alone. Okay. Um, the 2023 pool season has ended. I'm very excited about that. <laughs> um, <laughs> now it was a great year. Uh, staff have started winterizing. There's still a little more to go over there. Um, We've received great compliments on the condition of the facility and cleanliness of it. We are in the process of conducting a municipality survey that was sent out to 182 Illinois aquatic facilities regarding pool operations, um, wages, staffing levels, staffing incentives, and just general questions on pool operations. So we're in the process of, <clears throat> excuse me, collecting all that. And then uh, also, once we close out the 2023 budget, staff will be presenting our formal aquatic uh, report and financial report with the assistance of our vill assistant village manager slash director of finance, Carrie Dittman, who will also attend the meeting. Did you say, is that survey put out by the village or is it, no? So we as a village created that survey okay. and sent it out. So we took the initiative. And then we'll share obviously the results with those that participate. We have not done this in the past. No, right? we've not. This is, this is first time. But how, so how many, it's a, it's a random group that participates? So um, IPRA, Only Parks and Rec Association, has all these 182 either park districts or villages that belong to an aquatics roundtable group. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, this could be a down, uh, the village uh, park district of Champaign might participate in this. So we send it out to all those contacts that we have, and then hopefully they'll give us this information back so we can make sure that we're approaching our levels right with the rest of the state. Okay. okay. What about a survey to the pool patrons? That went out also. Oh, okay. That went out last Friday. Okay. Which will be included on the aquatic report. So that goes out to members. Obviously. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. And that focuses on the standard questions that we yes. had arranged from the previous cleanliness mm -hmm. programs, et cetera. Yeah. I just was going to say briefly that um, I think I went to the pool maybe five times this summer. And my my, you know, my family, my mom, my sister, you know, we, we, um, 
are, have been going to the pool for years. And I, I was very impressed with how it looked this year and how it was run. And, um, you know, the guards, the guards were just seemed excellent and just overseeing the guards, you know, the management, you had the pool managers, but then you also had, forgive me, I forgot his name, Tony, Tony, yes. um, who was, you know, an uh, adult, I mean, a figure there that was really visible walking the deck and really tending to, um, you know, any issues that, that, you know, the managers couldn't handle or just having a visible presence there. Um, it was very clean. The locker rooms, I mean, I, I never really saw issues. I, like I said, I was there maybe five times. So there, there's a lot of things I didn't see, but overall I thought it physically and it just looked, it was a good year. Yeah, it was a great year. You know, Tony, um, he was a fantastic help for us. I mean, it, he got me off that pool deck so I can focus on some administration stuff a little bit. Um, but he was very handy, would always fix yeah. something and then always, always give direction and always always was looking for a project. So I need like eight more Tonys. Right. Well, and I think the expect, <laughs> I think he was a new, it was a new kind of position so that's not something that the former guards maybe were used to having somebody like that. I think that maybe, I don't know, but getting used to how things are, you know, it's maybe being run or managed a little bit differently than it was. And so um, I think, again, it's just that expectation at the beginning of the season about this is what's expected. And sure. I think that it seems from my end and from what I saw looked well, good. Well, well, thank you. What were the reviews on the, uh, the concessions? I think oh, yeah. you know, the you know, thirteen-year-old, yeah, the thirteen-year-old kid was taking it over. Our our concessions. Um, his name was Kai Hammond. Um, he he was <laughs> relentless in wanting the opportunity. He probably called and emailed me every single day until we put out an RFP and he qualified for it, and, and we gave him a shot. Um, it, it was great. It was great communication with him. Him and I would talk daily, um, and, and not so much as me talking to give direction because I, I wasn't giving direction, but it'd be like, hey, Ty, we're closing early this day. We're going to open late this day, just so he could plan accordingly for the public too. Um, he cleaned up his facility at the end of the season. We, we had some, as, as always with concessions, some growing pains to go through as far as picking up and cleaning the concession deck, uh, but we got there <laughs> and we got it done in and you know, he was a hard worker. Was it worth his while? You know, I didn't hear that it was not worth his while. Um, I, I heard from the family themselves that it was um, it, it was a challenge, but they look forward to doing it again in the future. Oh, yeah. So I don't think it it hurt them by any means. I guess more, I, <clears throat> I guess more importantly, was it beneficial to the pool members? Right. Yeah. That I had mean, a certain level of expectation of what was being served previously, based on you know the local establishments catering into that yeah i know last year that comment was in the survey a lot that um it was sauce pizza was there that they were closed quite often i think this year the members saw that the concessions was open a lot uh with the exception of low attendance and cool weather days but i did not get one complaint about concessions not being open um if, if, if anything we got um a lot of positive feedback from from concessions because we had uh, birthday party packages out there and we were really trying to cram a lot of birthday party packages out there which which helped us and at the end of the year we actually worked with concessions and made a food menu specifically for the birthday parties um, so it was a really nice partnership it truly was yeah and again i didn't from my experience i think in the past you know the concession stand at the hinsdale pool it was never I mean, it was your basic, you know, pretzel, hot dog. It was, it was in, which was very adequate. Um, I think then when we were with sauce, I mean, I think they were trying to step it up a little bit. I think, um, I mean, I would say it, it was rather pricey. I feel like, I mean, I, but I know that that was the standard. I think they also were concessioning for Clarendon Hills pool, but you know, so I think that this year, again, I think things, it was like, Oh, I can, you know, go to the concession stand and get a pretzel for, you know, his Italian, or something. His Italian ice was amazing. I probably had 20 of them myself. <laughs> yeah. So I, I probably helped fund them. <laughs> yeah, so I think people are just appreciative to have something that their kids can bring a couple bucks to the pool and go to the pool and reasonable and, yep. you know, decent quality. So I, I, we'll see. 
I mean, I was not. The survey I did says. not. Yeah. Let's see what the yeah, survey, survey says. Survey says, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, going in the, in the KLM here a little bit. Uh, KLM had some great events in August and September. You know, one event that I, I'm not gonna go over all these, one event that did stand out to me was the Violet Foundation event, which did happen last Saturday. I actually attended it myself. It was a really, really nice event. It was the first time um, that uh, the foundation did this event out there and there was over 400 people in attendance wow. in the park. Uh, so they did a walk around the whole entire park and then they had tents set up outside and had Tommy Yars catering. Um, it was quick, easy event, started at three, it was done by 7.30 at night, uh, but the support for that, that foundation was fantastic. And it was, I think, a great opportunity for KLM because the amount of people were, that were there really highlighted our facility and, and it looked really nice. So I, I just kind of wanted to point that one out a little bit. Um, we do continue to work towards renting the facility on any remaining opening days in 2023. Um, it, we're grabbing any corporate meetings, memorials, special events, anything possible to fill those remaining spots. Uh, we are beginning to work on tracking analytics. Um, so as you can see between August and September, we are documenting amounts of inquiries, whether it's website, phone calls, and et cetera. Um, I think this data is valuable. It's gonna help assist us study the facility and trends in the months to come to see where, where we're going. Uh, and then, uh, we also attended the um, an expo, the Luxury Bridal Expo at, at in Oak Brook. Uh, we had over 200 attendees at it. Uh, this did make some connections with potential clients looking for a venue <clears throat> as well as expanding our network for possible vendors. Uh, and then we are also in the process of conducting a comparison study of similar facilities in the area, evaluating KOM operations and fees. More information will be provided as we get that information and develop it. And then I did put on the last page of the staff report, <clears throat> pardon me, um, a positive review that we did get from an event out of KOM. Mike, do you have, um, so I remember we did a comparison study several years ago. Do you have that data just to give you additional? You know, I'd have to here? go, I wasn't here for that, no. no say, Maggie, were you here when we got the information from like Donata, Donata and from, I'm trying to remember, we had, oh my gosh, what were all those sites? But I know we have those files and it was probably, mm -hmm. I mean, pre, everything in my mind is pre and post COVID. It was definitely pre COVID. Um, I mean, I wasn't here for very long pre COVID. I started in November of 2018. I feel like you've been here forever already. <laughs> yeah, I am eternal at this point. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, we can look at those files, but I think that what we're finding when we talk to these venues is so much has changed oh, I'm post COVID. Sure. I'm sure. Like, I mean, it's a completely different landscape in terms of these event venues and what they're doing and how they're pricing things. Um, but pretty consistently, we're seeing that everybody's experiencing the post-COVID slowdown. <laughs> like all yeah, those events I've, that got rescheduled for 2022, like it, it is starting to slow a little bit. I, so we're all trying to figure out how to. Yeah, I don't know. I don't that. know if I necessarily say that we're going to let the data talk once once we collect it all and really dive into it. But um, Maggie is completely right that so much has changed over the years, and it's something that we need to conduct, maybe not on an annual basis, but every two, three years, we should be de digging into the facilities and comparing like for like, just to see where we stand. Yeah, is, is, there, a, is there an operating budget goal for how many events uh, the facility needs to that's host? Part, that's absolutely part of all, all the information we're digging into and, put, okay. and trying to put a study together so we truly know the, the, the health of the facility. Sure, absolutely, okay. Um, I think some of that information would be you know, it might even give you, and you already know all the places to benchmark around here. It would be interesting to see what the others have done because you'd know information from several years ago and see how they've changed as well. Um, is there a reason why we're not getting the history report? Like we used to get a compare, you know, we used to have our monthly kind of number of events or number revenue, and we had that history for a couple of years just to give us a bird's eye view. Because it's nice to see these numbers, but honestly, I can't recall from last year, are we doing better or are we worse? Yeah, that, that's something also that we're, this is all, stuff in the last few weeks as we've been going through the budget process i actually just went through and calculated all the number of events going back to 2019 before covid started yeah, we um, that 
and it, it was it was a project that I'm almost done wrapped up on, but we had to um, go back and hard pull every single event because what we were not realizing in some of the, in the past is sometimes when we run reports, if the village, for example, puts like an event to KLM and it's free, it might count as an event on the numbers. So we wanted to make sure we were doing true paid event numbers, yeah. which is all part of this big grand study that we're putting together. That's been it's probably in week three of it right now, and it's we're getting at the tail end of it. We would hope at your next meeting that we would have more financials. We, we also have a new finance um, assistant village manager, finance director, uh, Carrie Dittman, who I don't think you've had a chance to meet yet. Um, she was hired a few months ago, and part of what she's doing is helping us to dig into some of this data as well. So we want to make sure that the information we're providing is accurate. So, um, yeah, we're right in the middle of it right now, but hopefully the next meeting we will have some good information for you to review. And will that include like some of the operating expenses, for example, of the lodge and the revenue coming in and just because I think to Pat's point was the, the break even, right? That we're yeah. kind of looking for like. Absolutely. So one of the things that we're planning to do for this budget process, which I don't think has done, been done previously, is to separate out the enterprise fund of the pool and KLM to see exactly how they are operating. Um, and as Mike said, there was some things maybe in the past, the way that things were provided that we want to make sure we're really drilling down to make sure that they're showing apples to apples comparisons over those years. We also want to make sure that each of these events are standing on their own, you know, do, you know, are the fees covering the costs. We've had increases in custodial services. We've had increases in maintenance as the facility, you know, ages. So, you know, really right sizing the budget, both on the revenue and the expense side. Um, and making sure that we're really, um, you know, covering those costs. The other thing that we've been trying to do is to use marketing that is maybe a little more cost effective, like social media, for example. Um, but, you know, there's still, to your point earlier, there's still people that sort of like that, you know, maybe a newspaper ad or something else. We're looking at doing partnerships with some of our jewelers in town, figuring out how we might be able to cross promote with them. So looking at some creative ways to really focus on marketing our venue as well. So we're kind of attacking it from a number of fronts, um, the budget being one, but then the survey being the other to kind of help us understand, you know, how do these other facilities that are also nonprofit types of facilities that are operated, maybe historical facilities as well, you know, how are they operating? Is there, are there things we can glean from that? And that's all information that we're planning to bring back to you. I think you're hearing that we appreciate yeah. like some data, what you know, financial data and other uh, other sorts of supporting data. We we used to get more of that than we have recently. But if you're in a process of you know sort of questioning the accuracy or completeness of some of that, or there's a better way to present it than you know what you've seen in the past, then that's wonderful. But we we look forward to that. Mm -hmm. Um, just a quick question on programming. It sounds like our programs have grown in number and scope. Um, yeah, um, mainly in the area of athletics. Uh, and that is a big contestant to hurdle across and uh, um, five-star five sports, sports kids. Uh, those, those areas of athletic programming are just a tremendous amount of growth. And so are we coordinating with the community house, for example, as well? Yes. Are we cross enrolling or are we? So we're working with not only the community house, um, Willowbrook, Port Ridge, um, numerous of the ones in the area um, to advertise not only some of their programs, some of our programs uh, as well. Um, I just did an index of everything uh, going into our winter spring. And I think we have three, over 300, 327 classes um, that'll be in this next book. And do you expect them to run? Do because we we oh gosh okay I guess I've been here a long time I'm dating myself but we've had our ups and downs going through this like we used to have classes we had to cancel because they weren't running well, then you, we had conflicts with different pricing at different air, you know competition with other yeah, park districts it sounds like it's all we we really worked towards trying to combine mm -hmm. and plan together with other park districts at the community house and it sounds like we've obviously gotten there but yeah while well, well not. Every class will run in a brochure. No park district or village will tell you that every class is run. But by having these partnerships 
it allows if we get two registered people and Burr Ridge gets one and the community house gets three, it allows us that ability to run those classes. And that, that's why we're really focusing on those partnerships and co-ops because it, 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 we're not canceling that high number of volume of classes. It does still happen, um, but that's the goal of co-ops. And there's still a resident discount versus there is. a non-resident? There is. Yeah, we just love, we used to get so much information about all of that. We knew every class and every, so yeah, we look forward to getting that data. I agree. Um, okay, any other comments or questions on the summer staff report? Okay, old business, no old business, no new business, correspondence, no letters, no emails. No. No, no. <laughs> do you remember getting the giant packets? I like do, numerate <laughs> every week. <laughs> yep. Uh, all right, other business. So update on parks and recreation projects. Yeah, as we told you guys before uh, a couple months ago, we we're gonna give a, a update on some future capital plans that we're working through right now as we go into the 2024 budget. Um, those plans include uh, purchasing of the Burns Field Playground Equipment, which is going to the Board of Trustees uh, next week, and then installing it in spring of 2024. It also, our capital plans are tentatively uh, focusing on the basketball court resurfacing at Burns, um, tennis court repairs, fence repairs alongside the road there. And we also do have uh, uh, some other repairs being done to the, the, that's happening right now to the paddle ball huts and to the shed out there that is being, they're being painted right now as we speak. Uh, the Capitol also is gonna have some fence repairs at KLM, which is an ongoing project. So it's a 55 acre park. So we allocate funds every single year to start tackling that fence. Um, in the next couple of weeks, actually half of the fence along County Line Road will be repaired. Um, not, not removed, but they're taking down some of the sections and, and any of those bench sections where people climbed on them or hit balls against them or dogs got caught on them or whatever happened. So that's all gonna get repaired. And then we have a tuck pointing project starting on the Montessori School in the next couple of weeks out there, focusing on the chimneys that are kind of in need of major repair. Uh, that also is being spread out over a course of a couple of years. Um, other capital purchases are pretty standard and is going to be a replacement of bleachers and soccer goals every year that's budgeted for accordingly. And then we do have some work planned tentatively at KLM next year, which uh, would focus on some flooring renovations, uh, the sound system upgrades out there. And then we'll, at the swimming pool, we have our general maintenance that we do every single year, which is uh, with the pumps. We budget the capital funding for the pumps. And then we do have a replacement of a heater and repairs of that um, canopy in the baby pool area, that wood canopy that needs some TLC. So that, that's our tentative 2024 capital. As we said, we're going through the budget process right now, uh, but based on priorities, that's kind of what areas we started focusing on. Do we have any plans or I know it's only October, but I think winter will be here quickly um, with the ice rink and what's going on. I know we've discussed, you know, on the tennis the, courts, off the tennis courts, we've had all kinds the, of- The ice rink liner came in today. Um, oh, I was just, noti it. just notified on it. Um, no, it, it can't be put into the ice rinks because of how the tennis poles are. They're, they're okay. completely hard mounted into it. So it would remain in the same spot. Um, hopefully we'll have better weather this year because last year it, it, it got cold and then it got warm. So we, we hope to have that running a lot more this year. Um, also, one other thing in the capital that we're going to start this year and it's going to carry over into 2025 is we're going to start the process of updating our park master plan. Um, doing a survey that focuses not only on the facilities, but our assessment of our programs and assessment of the whole entire, the park system as a whole, which I do believe the last one was done, I think it was like 2007, might have been even before that. Okay, what does that exactly mean, that master plan? So, so our master plan is we'll, we'll work with the company, they'll come and they'll do a community survey. Uh, the community survey will conduct or uh, ha have a multiple two questions on it for the public. 
Uh, what type of programs do you like? Do you like adult programs? Do you want to see more athletic programs? What's the conditions of the facility? Do you want to see um, different amenities offered? It's, it's, it kind of gives a health in the, of your community and a status update. So we as planners can offer what the community is looking for and wants. Um, who knows, the community might want um, t tons of uh, pickleball courts, you know? We'll also get obviously input from you guys too on, as part of the process. Um, and the last time I actually did one of these surveys, the process involved not only my commission, but it involved also the staff. So there will be data will be coming from multiple different avenues in order to generate this report. And what is the timing of it? Did you say? We have we're going to start planning it next year, um, and then funds are planned for it also in 2025. So it's going to be split between two of the years because it is a lengthy process to go through. And that's just for that. That's the two-year study, and then. Yeah, well, I mean, we'll and start it. The third in year would be some sort of implementation plan based on those results. So we'll start it in the fall. We'll wrap it up in the spring. Um, and then whatever the survey says out of it will implement, you know, future planning for the village and the parks departments, whether that's adjusting capital needs, whether that's adjusting program offerings. But that is essentially going to be a, a map for us to make sure that we're going in the right direction. Um, and I just have to ask, dog park, no complaints? Have we heard anything about how well the dog park is doing? Or um, no wedding crashers? I, I haven't had any from weddings. I, I, we, we, get, we have had some feedback, um, mainly from my disc golfers that are out there. Um, but the feedback's been minimal, and we've been able to resolve it with working with our police department of either doing some more drive-bys um, one thing that was brought to my attention, and it's something I'm, I'm working on, is a lot of these um, dog walkers are Googling our hours out there at KLM. And if you Google our hours at KLM, it comes up inaccurate. I've been trying to reach out to Google for two weeks to get this changed, and it, it's, it's like I need to contact NASA to get a hold of somebody. So once we can get our account set up in there and, and Google figured out, we're going to be able to adjust those online hours that we have no control as the as the dog hours change and we'll be able to go in there and make those adjustments um, other than that we put up some additional signage over by the hoa over there um, they, they actually paid for a whole new fence the hoa over there at klm and put it in and when that fence was taken down they took they took our signs with them so we reinstalled all the signs along that fence One other question comes to mind about grants. The, we were in the middle of some grants, um, or you know, spending grant money, uh, applying to some additional grants. Any any so, update there? So the 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 pool grant for that project, those funds have all been used. Okay. That was that Aslan grant. Um, my predecessor Heather did apply for a grant at KLM for a renovation and an elevator, and, and the village was not awarded that. Um, However, we as a village did acquire some state funding to help with the possibility of an install of the elevator and we're starting that process right now. I actually met with the architect firm that was originally used out there to update those plans and dust them off because it's been so many years. Um, so th that's a lot more information to come. And we also will are and are going to be applying for additional grants for the pool uh, but right now, there none of them are released from the state, and that usually happens after the first of the year. And we we can apply for some um, ADA grants through our insurance company. I know at, at the pool we're looking to get a new lift out there and update the stairs. And last I heard, there were some grant opportunities for those type of items as well. And Mike, back to the um, Burnsfield playground. So I know the original timeline was to get that installed in the fall, and we were, what were we waiting for? We were, was it we were waiting for the funds to be approved internally? Um, we were kind of vetting it out in the inside here, and we wanted to go through the budget process. 
So we wanted to see where we were for 2023 and plan 2024 budget. And now that we're going through that process, we have a better idea of how we can allocate funds accordingly. Um, unfortunately, no, I can't get it installed because the weather window is just, it's closing for the year. No, I understand. Uh, but we can um, split up the cost between two budget years, which is what we're going to do with the purchase and then the install. Uh, it is going to the Village Board of Trustees uh, uh, next Monday. And do we have other parks that are hitting that 25 year lifespan? You know, that, that's part of the, I should say. That's, that's, and that's kind of why we started this conversation with the, the master plan and assessments is because we need that outside company or person to come in and provide us guidance. I mean, yes, we as staff can walk around and, and, and say this park has hit 25 years, but that doesn't necessarily mean it needs to be oh, replaced. I totally agree. There yeah. might be some strategic things that we can do of updating and sprucing up the park. So we're trying to think of the picture as a whole and really make sure we're coming up with a good plan. Any other questions? No? Okay, I think, unless you have anything else, Mike, up, that's our update on Parks and Recs. I think we have one and other agenda item under we discussion. Have the, yes, moving on to 8B, our 150th sesquicentennial yes. campaign. Yes, thank you very much. Um, included in your packet is some information about the 150th Memorial Building Plaza and Roof Railing Campaign. Hopefully you've heard about it in, in other ways, um, but if not, we just wanted to make you aware of the campaign. Um, it is up and running. To date, we have received over $36,000 in donations from residents and local businesses, which is wonderful. Um, and we are currently finalizing the project details and plans for the plaza project. Um, and, you know, the, I think there's an eye towards value engineering. We're looking at long lasting materials, um, things that can sustain a public plaza, as well as um, snow removal and um, those types of aspects. Um, there are several different donation levels for the campaign and businesses who participate receive a window cling, residents and families who donate receive a yard sign, um, and depending on the donation amount, donors will be recognized with a plaque. Um, all donors will be recognized um, in the Hinsdalian and some other ways as well. Um, the contributions are tax deductible. Our target deadline for the end of the campaign is December 31st. And um, for those of you that don't know, um, you know, 100 years ago, the village came together um, and provided donations in order to build this building. It was a um, uh, meant to honor the Hinsdalians who had fought in wars and, and did not return. And so um, this is another opportunity for Hinsdalians to work together to um, improve the plaza, which is really a, a touchstone for the community. It's used for many, many events. And then also the historic roof railing, um, which is a Chippendale si uh, style roof railing that was removed at some point, probably due to deterioration. And the goal is to um, put it back on the building as it was originally um, built. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, also, there's a QR code that'll take you directly to the communication portal on this. Um, we also provided, I think, an email to all of you with some information, a little uh, social media graphic, to the extent that you can share that with your social media networks or if you're involved in any clubs or organizations at school or church or anything like that, we would really appreciate your help in spreading the word regarding the campaign. Thank you. What is the goal? Uh, well, the goal is a little bit um, fluid in that it, it really is sort of dependent on how much is raised as far as, you know, what the project is going to look like. Um, right now, like I said, there's a focus on trying to have quality materials that will also withstand the elements and the selection of those materials really um, dictate the overall cost. Um, there's also some idea that maybe we'll provide the project in phases. So um, the goal is, is a little um, not defined. However, the more money that we're able to raise, I think the more, um, you know, 
the more aspects of the program that we will be able to provide, or aspects of the project we'll be able to provide. So, um, so yeah, hopefully by the end of the year, we'll, we will have determined how much money we have raised as a result of this effort and then finalize um, the plans. And the goal is to really construct all of this in the spring um, and have it be completed by um, the time that um, endless, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, uniquely Thursdays begins. So the estimates will come after, <laughs> after the donations are counted. That's well, what it sounds like because the goal is fluid. It doesn't sound like we've got, you know, uh, estimates for any of the multiple I'm sure or there individual. Must be, so say, I mean, is there a priority? Like if there's not enough, like is the railing mm -hmm. not going to be done? Like what's the priority level? Because it, it just, there's, I looked at, the deadline isn't really out there. Like I had to dig, it doesn't tell you anywhere. So I'm glad you told us it was till the end of December. I think that might instill a little bit more of a sense of urgency in people that they know there's a deadline. Maybe it's mm -hmm. out there, but I didn't know what it was. And I had looked previously. And okay. also that you don't know what the goal is. Like it's nice, I think, to see progress to a goal and right. it kind of spurs people on if they know, we are we that, close, that are we far? Thermometer yeah, it's, it's, that's, <laughs> that's what I'm thinking of. But, yeah, um, we have, I mean, there's a general budget of about $300,000 um, and that's really for the, um, for the plaza. There's, you know, additional costs associated with the roof rail. So, but again, I think that that, that budget can be amended depending on how much is raised and uh, the amenities that the community would like to see with those projects. So the plaza is kind of the priority and then if the roof rail would be a phase two if it's not necessarily raised now, is that? Well, the, the campaign allows for money to be provided for either the plaza or the roof rail or both. And so the vast majority of the proceeds that we've received are people that are donating to both, meaning they um, it's just a general yeah so at, you know I think those decisions will be made as far as how that would be handled once we again kind of have an idea of how much money will be available for these projects so um, yeah I'm sorry I understand <laughs> the question but it's been difficult I think to provide a, a set budget without knowing exactly how much funds are going to be raised towards the project how long has it been running right now? When did it kick off? Um, we kicked it off, I believe, in July, early early August, um, is when we really started to fine tune the materials. Um, I think the the first time that we actually uh, really rolled the program out was at the August seventeenth Uniquely Thursdays, which is when we had the light show. So that was really the first time that we really. Um, we're providing more of a public um, push, I guess, for the campaign itself. And then we've been rolling it out in various phases, um, you know, asking boards and commissions to assist with the rollout, uh, sending it out to our business community, um, you know, assist, having the chamber assist. So there's, there's been various phases of the campaign and there will continue to be as we get closer to the end of the year. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions, comments on the campaign? Okay. Do we have anything else? Nope. That's all. All right. Um, usually our next meeting is scheduled for, usually I have it on the bottom here, November. November 11th. November 11th? Something like that. Is that Tuesday? I don't have my, I just put it in the newsletter and I don't Did you just put it? I, I should have looked. If, if, it, if it's the second Tuesday, it's November 14th. November 14th, okay. At 6 p.m. Thank you, at 6 p.m., that's what. And that time still works for everybody? Are we gonna put on the agenda next meeting? I know we had talked a little bit about perhaps uh, frequency of meetings, attendance of meetings. Is that something that we will talk about next I, month? I think that's a great idea. I mean, as we're coming into the new fiscal year, so I think that's a good idea to put on the agenda. Yeah, so just something to think about. Um, I mean, when you look at this and we're approving minutes from April and May, I mean, that was a long time ago. We had several meetings where we didn't have quorums. We typically have a couple of meetings in the summer where we don't meet. I think December we typically don't meet. It's kind of changed a little bit over the years, but something to think about is, do we need to meet monthly? Because I think there are some months that maybe we don't need to meet or maybe an email informational exchange might be su sufficient, or do we? And um, 
you know, when we do have things to vote on, et cetera, it's sometimes, it's, it's difficult when we don't get a quorum then because then we have to push it back another month, et cetera. So something just to think about is, sure. you know, your commitment to meetings and would monthly or quarterly be better and, and hopefully we'll have a little bit of more information and be able to have a constructive dialogue yeah. next month. Okay. We'll wave it on there. Okay, great. On November 14th. All right. Um, well, I guess if we have nothing further, can I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Commissioner Baker. Aye. Commissioner Bora. Aye. Commissioner Hester. Aye. Commissioner Keene. Yes. And Commissioner Reary. Yes. All right. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.